Hey everyone, we're going to be talking about the recent tragedy of Eva Liu and Kelsey Chang that recently happened in Germany involving a American man. And obviously this is going viral across the internet. A lot of people are discussing a lot of things. And so yeah, we're, we're going to be talking about it. Yeah. I mean, this is not our favorite thing to talk about, but there's so many discussions going on on so many different levels right now surrounding this incident. Obviously RIP to Eva Liu and uh, best wishes to Kelsey Chang. And, um, yeah, from American violence to racial violence against Asians to school smarts versus street smarts to the politicization of tragic events, um, the comments section went everywhere and back, and uh, we're going to cover some of them as well as give you our takeaways. But, um, yeah, obviously, Andrew, this is just like a, it's a tragic thing, and it's going viral, and people do die every day. But this one's obviously going to hit the Asian community a little different. Yeah, and uh, it definitely does fall in line with a lot of the fetishization of Asian women to the Asian hate and to, to almost everything. And then now people are diving into the perpetrator and what how he looks and what does he represent. So uh, let's just get into the comment section. And I think a lot of our even personal stories will come out from it. So uh, I guess let's just begin. Yeah. The first comment, I pulled this actually off of a German YouTube site. Somebody said, in the beginning, I was like, this doesn't happen in Germany. This sounds like American news. And then it reveals itself that the dude was American and then the victims were American. Yeah, so Germany actually has a really, really low like homicide rate. And so I think a lot of people generally think that Germany is really safe. And I think for the most part it is, but... And, and I don't want to only blame the fact that he's American, but the perp is a white American, essentially. Right. And so it was the other American that they met, but we're going to get into the story later. So Yeah, I go. heard that it's actually really common for women to travel even uh, everywhere in Germany by themselves. Yes. Because I've, the rates of, uh, you know, terrible things happening are so much lower in a yeah. racial basis. I, I know plenty of Asian women who have backpacked by themselves solo trips around Europe. Honestly, and yes, they they probably avoided certain things and, you know, certain things happen, but they were totally fine and enjoyed their time. So uh, obviously I'm not saying like this happens all the time in Germany. It doesn't. Um, somebody said the University of Illinois computer science program is no joke. I cannot imagine going through all of that just to have your life taken from you in an instant straight after condolences to her friends and family. Um, I did a little bit of research. Andrew Eva Liu was a top student at a science and math high school, became a top student at the University of Illinois in Champaign. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, was obviously just taking a quick vacation before starting her career where she had gotten a really, really good job at Microsoft. Mm. And um, yeah, I think that th th this case is really relatable to a lot of Asians, right? Because a lot of Asians, uh, obviously it's variable, but like you you just try to do the right things, you know? You try, to, you try to study really hard, you try to get a good job, and you try to just go on with your life. And hiking, it's just like, uh, this is one of the most popular hiking destinations in the world. Yeah, I mean, think about it. You know, you, D D Eva, let's just, I mean, I don't I don't want to make too many assumptions about her in her life, but, you know, she. it seems like she did what she was supposed to do her whole life, made her her, her family happy, and then uh, she she probably likes, and she wanted, they, they both probably agreed to have some type of spontaneity and, like, follow this other pathway and felt like they trusted this American, and then it possibly ends up the worst possible uh, scenario, honestly. There was a lot of comments saying, what really pains me about this story is the guy was American too. He probably gained their trust uh, by doing so because, you know, they're in a foreign country, they're American, he's American. There's some level of trust when you're in a foreign place with your, you know, people who, who speak like you. Yeah. And then he exploited that trust to prey on them and ultimately try to murder both of them and then murder one of them. Yeah, listen, it's very common when you travel to other countries to meet up with other people that are like you and have go on spontaneous trips with them or do something fun with them and you make a memory and right. it's Right, anybody cool. who's traveled abroad knows that you make the connections yeah. with the, you know, like Canadians yeah, or know, Americans. Not, or I mean, people, you know, you want to feel like a little bit open to things and, and that's what they were open. But what I'll say this, it, it kind of reminds me 
of this story that we heard from a friend of this Asian guy who was from Irvine, California, who was visiting New York City, and he got really, really drunk one night, and he's wearing a Rolex on his wrist, okay? So he got a little bit of jewelry on, something shiny, right? And there's a uh, there's a car full of black guys who are like, hey, hey, come over here, and they're like playing music, and, and they're being really friendly to him, and he's really drunk, and he's just thinking, oh, this might be a cool New no, York story. No, this is story. a real story. We this know is a, this guy. a real story. I'm not making up. Heard from my friend. And uh, he's like, oh, this might be a cool story. Let me hang out and sit in this car with these guys listening to this music and before he knows it he's getting robbed and then they, he gets left out on the street now he's still alive and thankfully all that happened is getting robbed but he really thought that it was all sweet and that he could trust people and that it was going to be fun obviously he was drunk too so he, that made him a target as well but I guess what I'm saying is like and that's not to say like you can't trust anybody overseas but I guess what I'm saying is that this just went to the, the this is the worst possible. Um, case there was scenario. comments saying this is so horrific to go to a, abroad and prey on your own fellow countrymen. But then there was another comment that said, you know, I don't know if he saw them as fellow true Americans. He probably just saw them as Asians. You know what I mean? Because he was white, and it, there was just the, the whole racial but, but, but violence. But why does it? I, I don't even know if the countryman thing has to do with it. You know, like this guy is clearly just an evil person period like i don't think it's like oh if these girls maybe if these girls are white too he still treats them the same too like i don't want to like i think that of course race could be a factor but this guy is clearly evil enough to have done it to a number of people i bet for sure um and i'm sure once they investigate his past and they'll investigate his life in america and they'll be able to see if there's any other additional crimes that they investigate into somebody said uh, this is a Asian female from an Asian female Reddit forum saying, uh, I travel a lot and Western men, particularly American men abroad, are the ones to avoid. Um, many people from other countries tend to act more shy overseas, but Americans act worse often. Obviously, not all are bad. I've met some great ones too, but I've just been through many, too many bad stories myself and heard too many bad stories from other people. Somebody followed up. By the way, guys, these are not my words at all. These are just comments I'm reading off the internet. White American men need to feel dominant, so they go after Asian women who they think are submissive and easy targets. When he failed to sexually assault them, he killed them. That is the ultimate act of dominance of the other foreign alien. Um, um, yeah, I can't comment fully on that, but I can tell you this. like After traveling over in Asia, obviously you do see Asian guys that are you know expats visiting Asia who are acting wild, but I've definitely seen... A lot of Western men, particularly Australian, British, and American men, act like assholes. They'll even like go against the police when you're yeah. over there too. They, they do not respect it. To be I honest, obviously, seen... it's not all. Oh, I got some great friends that are, you know, white in Asia too. But I'm just saying, in terms of people just lying down on taxis and just treating it like a, uh, you know, treating it like it's their playland, like it's their Lego land, you know? Yeah, and they're being a mischievous like bad kid yeah but it, obviously it's it's much worse when you're an adult and obviously the ramifications and the extent of it can be terrible um somebody said uh the university of illinois where they graduated from is also where chinese scholar ying ying Zhang was abducted and killed and um yeah that's this a is not a coincidence that, i mean it, it's that's a horrible ho case and if you guys want to look up details you can google her and and what happened there was a whole like murder mystery thing behind it and uh man that was that was horrific Somebody said uh, they will not extradite to the U.S. if the U.S. says they're going to go for the death penalty uh, because that is not German policy. Obviously, German policy, they have not released this guy's identity or anything like that. But a lot of people are like saying it's a shame that he's going to be able to chill in one of these like easygoing prisons in Germany versus a tough American prison. So this is, was a huge conversation about rehabilitation and everything. Somebody said, uh, and Andrew, now we're on to this other part where people are, are talking about the way this guy looks. Mm. They said, uh, look at this guy. He looks super MAGA, like he just rushed the Capitol on July 6th. Um, you can tell what type of music he looks listens to. He looks like a neck beard. He is dressing like um, a white supremacist, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of comments about his looks because he does look, I would say, probably very stereotypical. Yeah, he, he does. He is dressed and appearing to be stereotypical. He has a little bit of the beard. He looks like he drives a truck. And not that there's anything wrong with people who drive truck. And obviously not everybody honest, got this look, but it's just like, it's a striking look. Yeah, right? yeah. It does look like somebody who did raid the Capitol. 
Yes. For sure. I mean, it looks stereotypical, blue collar, white Appalachian, whatever you want to call it, meth or what. I don't know. David, some people were pointing out how it kind of looks like uh, he kind of looks similar to the the person of from the perpetrator from the Atlanta spa shootings and then also um, the same guy from the Ying Ying Tong story. Yeah. Like there's a similar look. I'm not saying that everybody who has this look is bad, but is there some type of pattern? There were so many comments like this on the internet. Yeah. I mean, man, I don't even like to talk about this, but there's somebody who shared this like clothing pattern who I hate bringing this up, but like actually murder somebody at our church and she was also an asian girl so somebody who fits this look basis by the way i'm not saying everybody you know what i'm not trying to demonize a look i'm just saying that is my story that is that is actually horrible um and i don't like to tell that story um somebody said how can you base someone just off their look because obviously people are saying that they're going to politicize this if it turns out andrew that this guy was a trump supporter part of a white supremacist group, part of a, you know what I mean? A conservative right movement. Uh, people are already ready to politicize this on the left and people are willing to counter spin this on the right. Yeah. This is the whole political thing that's going on, especially going into election season. Yeah. And, uh, but also what happens if in the, I would say off chance that he's a, a hardcore Democrat or he's a liberal for whatever reason, I don't know. Like, well, it will, it will just be spun and used. But yes, he definitely fits a look. Somebody said, why has America lost its mind? Does it seem like a sizable portion of Americans have gone insane lately? Some people are saying this is all Western culture. Some Europeans came in and said, no, by the way, this is not Europe. This is an American thing. What wow. are you guys doing over there? Yeah, I think that uh, especially given all the mass shootings, I think Europe is looking at America like, listen, man, we got our issues over here, but I don't know what's going right, on. This, what are we you got guys issues, thinking? but this is not one of them. Like, what are you guys doing? Like, this is your thing. Somebody says, it seems like America has some of the most evil, deranged incels more than any other country. I wonder if it has anything to do with the extremely individualistic culture and the lack of free health care. Yeah, listen, I, I think that we can attribute it to a bunch of things. We can make assumptions because this guy is like probably white. I don't know his exact ethnic background because we don't know his name or identity. But I think it, it, it's it's like, I don't know. Do I want to say like this is a risk of taking spontaneous chances with people? Now, spontaneous chances with people can become really fun stories. I get it. We've all at some point made a spontaneous decision yeah. and- and 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 sometimes so, it's great. Sometimes it's great. And sometimes sometimes yeah, it leads to something amazing. And once in a while, it leads to the worst possible scenario. And this is what happens. This is like that horror story. And and honestly, like I do think people need to be, you know, just do the popular thing, stay in big crowds. I'm, I'm not saying don't hang out with people you just met, but hang out with them in the crowd, in the in the popular area. And I think that's just a little side lesson that I saw people were talking about, even women were talking right, about right. it on Reddit, but it's just like, man, it, it's, that's the, that's the thing that kills me. It can go so well sometimes, but this went so bad. Somebody said, uh, it is a fundamental breakdown of American society. Humans need to be conditioned to be good. Like pit bulls, German shepherds, or Rottweilers. All those types of dogs have a bad side that can come out if untrained. It seems like a lot of Americans are no longer being trained properly in 2023. Mm. Somebody yes. said, uh, yeah, don't politicize this. They're going to politicize this. Of course, this is like, you know, just typical back and forth. Somebody said, I would vote for a minority report type predictive mental service to prevent this from happening in the future. We cannot continue to have a society where stronger, physically more aggressive people feel like they can just do anything to somebody that is smaller and physically weaker than them. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's not... I do think, I mean, media culture, um, whether it's fetishization or just big versus small dynamics here, man versus woman, I do think that uh, it feels like the predators are being enabled almost. It feels like that. But I don't know the full numbers because I think that things like this have kind of always happened. Right. There's once in a, while. a lot more internet media nowadays. The, the news can disseminate much quicker. We'd have to look at a lot of different stats uh, 
America just has a lot of tons of ups and a lot of tons of downs that other countries do not have. It just has both sides. And somebody said, yeah, I agree with you. So should women specifically or anybody who is viewed as an easier target live in a constant state of paranoia or not? Yeah, I mean, you know, we go back to Christina Unalee, rest in peace. You know, that happened in New York, a couple blocks away. And, you know, she got murdered uh, by a guy who was waiting outside of the door, who slipped in and followed her up. And then, you know, obviously the most horrible thing happened. Um, and so cases like this really make you think, like, do smaller Asian women, pretty Asian women, pretty women in general, women in general, do they need to be very paranoid you know, and then do smaller guys need to be paranoid? Obviously, if you're a very large man, to be honest, you're less of a target. For whether, sure. Whether you're Asian, no matter your color, if you're just a large dude, you are much less of a target by, of anything. Right. Um, but if you're a smaller person, you're a, more of a target from anything. Too. Somebody said Asians in the West just need to really learn to be extremely vigilant. This place is full of predators and violence. Obviously, obviously, there's some really great people, but on the downside, there's so much more creepers and degenerates than would be walking the streets of Asia. And somebody said uh, this traditional Asian upbringing is doing us a disservice because basically we are not street smart and a lot of people are going to make us victims, whether it's in the workplace, politics, society, or obviously in terms of street violence. I mean, you guys let me know in the comments down below what you think about this. We talk about this all the time on our channel about assimilating or understanding the culture here. America is violent. People are spontaneous. Obviously, this happened. This, honestly, I can see, though, being in Germany, knowing it's a safe country, you just assume this is even less likely to happen. Maybe they're more on guard in America. Maybe these two girls, maybe they... That's a good point. You know what I mean? Because it's in your brain. You're like, okay, we're in America, blah, blah, blah. But now you're in Germany. Ger like, what if it happened in Sweden? An American in Sweden. Then you're just like, well, Sweden, like nothing happened. Nothing bad happens in Sweden, you know? So. Right. Somebody yeah. said, uh, nobody is going to judge white men as a group because white men have the privilege of being seen as individuals. However, other ethnicities would have had their entire group vilified or colored by this uh, terrible incident or a horrific act committed by one of their members. Um, and somebody said, yeah, like there's like different stereotypes of people. Let's say, for example, the guy who asked him to go on the other path was, uh, you know, another group, you know, like, let's just say like black or Arab, then like, who knows if they're going to follow them due to like global stereotypes. Sure. Yeah. No, nah, I mean, that's real because the white guy, maybe he was acting very friendly. He's like, oh, you know, I'm fellow American. Come on. Hey, check out this path, you know, and it just sounds like something that seems okay. Somebody said that, uh, this is the last comment we'll go, like we said, there's so many. Um, somebody said, Asian women have to be vigilant because women are viewed as much weaker than men and Asians are oftentimes viewed as weaker, as the weakest or least aggressive race. That means that Asian women theoretically by this formula would be the biggest targets in the world, even for predators that wouldn't necessarily attack other groups of people, they would attack the one that they view as the easiest target. It's hard to say. I think that there's some truth to this, but I, I, I can't say for sure. But what I can say is that, um, yeah, I think everybody needs to learn and get updated and train, treat smarts, and some level of self-defense. You know, um, it, I read that uh, Eva, before she, before she got, um, pushed off, she was able to scratch up the guy's face and do some damage so that he was identifiable as the perpetrator because his face was bleeding, you know? So, um, unfortunately it didn't save her life, but it did possibly save some other lives and at least got him caught, helped get him caught. So, um, yeah, man, this is just, this is just horrible news that I, I don't think really anybody likes to talk about it, but there are a lot of thoughts that roll through your head, you know, when you hear stuff like this, especially the players involved, white guy, two Asian girls, people make a lot of assumptions about that. But I guess, David, what are the, uh, the overall takeaways? Man. My general thinking, obviously, beyond just the kind of, I guess, the typical response that everybody has, which is this is horrible, lock this guy up forever. Obviously, some people want to extradite him for the death penalty. Legally, it's going to get really complicated there. But, like, um, it's just, like, Asian people that are from a very certain type of background, if you're living in the Western society, 
we have to up our IQ for the less for the for the uh, darker sides of life. I think, I think that that's something I would recommend to everybody. And it's, uh, I think it's difficult to think about sometimes that we are viewed as like, in very simplistic terms, like doves, and other people are hawks, right? And not that hawks are good or bad or doves are good or bad, but hawks can essentially like are more a lot more of aggressive bird than a dove is. Mm-hmm. And if we're in the dove position, we got to figure out what we're going to do because people are going to be perpetually, you know, hawking on us. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think I don't want people to live in a, in a state of fear or paranoia, but you do have to understand that uh, when you interact with certain people, you are definitely more like prey, you know, yeah. and you are a target. You're an easy target. And I think it, that shouldn't bother your life all the time. You should still want to live life. But if you are going to go out and, and be outside yeah. and do some risky things and, and want to even parasail or go on hikes or go do this, go do hang out with random people. Um, right. you, you do have to tighten up. Like, and again, I don't want to like, and I'm just saying this could, this could still be one of those cases that happens honestly once every only like five years. And this is just the worst case. Yeah, and there's going to be a whole bunch of other instances of people who had fun on their hikes right. as well. And so this could just be literally bad luck that it is hard to avoid. It's just like if you went swimming uh, and you know, there've been a lot of high profile cases recently of people being obviously tragically eaten by sharks in that situation, a human in the water is the dove and the shark is the hawk. Yeah. Um, I think that also a lot of Asians, we tend to have really successful careers in, in, in parts of society that seem to be a little bit more free from the primal game theory which mm-hmm. is like tech, medicine, yeah, more more built up, removed from that, perhaps more civilized. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the, um, in terms of street interactions, it still, in my opinion, boils down to that. Yeah, I th- and I think, again, like, you know, uh, you can always draw a bunch of connections and you can, it can be confirmation bias for whatever you want to believe. But like, you know, they're engineers, they're very smart, two very smart women. Obviously, Kel- Kelsey is still recovering. She is alive and recovering. But like Eva, uh, you know, is, is a very smart person but you know probably spends a lot of time in a computer in the computer lab to be honest like working with other engineers and so uh maybe she does go on hike maybe she's an experienced hiker but like you know going on hikes that's an outdoor thing it's a di- very different from a lot of people's world so i don't know you know you can always pick at the specifics and then hindsight is twenty twenty, and then this is all this keyboard experts on the internet that say oh i wish she didn't do that or i wish this happened or this guy shouldn't have done that and and you know what happens like literally every whether it's incidents involving men or women it's like yeah it's it, we're, it we're happens looking, every global news is, incident we're all looking at it with the review goggles on, knowing what the result was. So, of course, we can work backwards and say, oh, I wish this didn't happen. That is why I want to empathize and say, guys, this is a tough situation because when you're out traveling, you want to hang out with random people, and sometimes it's really great. Most of the time, it's probably good, actually. Most of the time. Sometimes it goes bad. So I don't know fully what to tell you other than just be more careful. you know. Yeah. But anyways, guys, um, you know, let us know in the comments down below what you think. Lots to unpack, lots of layers to this. And at the end of the day, you know, we don't know these people personally exactly what happened, but uh, just, yeah, just be careful out there. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, Check out other episodes of the Hot Pot Boys and we're out. Peace.